This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today I want to answer the question, should you buy a house or Bitcoin instead? And this is really the Shaolin 015's question. He wrote, I'm trying to convince my wife that we should be buying Bitcoin, not real estate, especially not until all the boomers pass down their houses after they pass and the real estate supply increases. How would you convince your wife that Bitcoin is a better buy than real estate and that we should keep renting? Can you do a video about Bitcoin versus real estate? Yes, the answer to this question is happy wife, happy life. So that was a pretty easy question to answer. Now some nuance, of course, you only live once. Your time on earth is the only thing more scarce than Bitcoin and Bitcoin is freedom money. Bitcoin can help you to store your economic energy and even grow it until you're ready to exchange it for goods and services. So if it's not some really stupid impulse purchase, I don't think anyone's going to tell you that you're making a bad personal decision for your own particular situation if you sell some Bitcoin to buy something that you really want or need, or if you use your fiat to buy something that you really want or need instead of buying Bitcoin. As for owning a primary residence, owning your own house does make a lot of sense from a self-sovereignty perspective up to a certain point. You don't have to worry about snooping landlords. You can stay in one place and put down roots. If you want to remodel it, you can do that. Now I've rented, owned, and been a landlord, so I know what it's like to be on all sides of this trade. But the only thing I never sold to buy Bitcoin was my primary residence. Now this was a suboptimal investment decision. I knew it at the time, but I think a good lifestyle family decision. But what I did do is I did sell off all my rental houses and I bought Bitcoin with the proceeds, which I'm very, very glad that I did. So I definitely believe that Bitcoin is far superior to investment properties, but a primary residence is another question. Bitcoin's, I think, a better investment, but you might have more fun living inside of a house than living inside of a Bitcoin, as they say. Now, here's a bad reason to buy a house or land. They're not making any more of it, this famous saying, whether it was Mark Twain or someone else. Whoever said it was evidently unaware that it's now scientifically possible to stack people's living quarters. It's called multi-story buildings, Central Park Tower in New York City, the hedge fund hotel, so to speak. And it's also not true that they're not making any more land. It looks like Hawaii is growing by about 42 acres per year due to volcanic activity. And then you have the UAE building amazing things like Palm Jumeirah, not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, that looks like this, where they're literally making more land. So land is not nearly as scarce as Bitcoin, as you'll discover. There are other problems with real estate as an investment class as well. It's obviously not portable. So if your neighborhood, state, or country goes down the tubes, you may not be able to sell your house or at least sell it for a price that you like. Who wants to buy a house in Gaza or Kiev today, for example? Also, if your jurisdiction does not respect property rights, they may allow squatters or gangs to take over your house. We've heard stories like this out of California and possibly Colorado as well. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I just ask you to help to support this channel. Hit the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video. Also share this video with a friend or family member. Another problem, if there's a national outbreak of some sort of flu, the government may not allow you to collect rent from your tenant, which could cause you to default on your mortgage. So there can be a lot of government interference in rental properties and investment properties. Other problems, houses are extremely illiquid with large trading costs, both to get in and to get out. They can take months or years to sell. You pay quite high fees and commissions compared to stocks and Bitcoin. Houses also come with an annual government extortion payment that we call the property tax and your local sheriff or your local government or your federal government or your state government may decide that you're no longer allowed to live in your house for various reasons, but perhaps because you didn't make some local extortion payment. By contrast, Bitcoin is portable, can be moved to a more friendly jurisdiction. It's unconfiscatable, can't be destroyed by flood or fire, unlike houses, can't be taken over by squatters. You can't have squirrels living in your attic when you own Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't have a property tax, doesn't require insurance, doesn't require maintenance. And I think that last point is really important and is not widely as widely understood as it perhaps should be that houses are very leaky economic vessels. And what do I mean by this? I mean that without ongoing annual maintenance, your house can very, very quickly go feral as we saw happen with many houses in Detroit, for example, over the years with trees and bushes growing out of them. Houses are relatively, relatively poor stores of value because of these ongoing carrying costs. They eat into your returns, 
property taxes, as we said, insurance, mortgage payments, utilities, which are necessary, absolutely necessary in most places per, for preventing freezing or overheating or black mold or something like this. Also the ongoing maintenance costs, which people never tell you about or account for when they tell you how much they bought their house for and sold it for as if that entire amount was pure profit. But if you've ever been a homeowner or an investment property owner, you know how much money you have to spend over the years on new carpets, new paint, a new roof, new driveway, new furnace, new water heater, new expensive furniture for your fancy living room that you're never going to use or you're going to use once a year at Christmas, gardening costs, tr trimming trees, damage from leaky showers and overflowing toilets, all of these problems that come with owning a physical property in the real world, which is subject to entropy. Houses are leaky economic vessels. And even if you rent out the house to earn investment income, you'll be very lucky to break even after normal wear and tear and the occasional extraordinary damage caused by bad tenants who can't pay for the repairs and thus vaporize your last 12 months of rental profits. And you really have no recourse except writing them a bad report. But wait, there's more. Houses are an especially bad store of value during periods of high inflation. So for example, that house that you bought for $300,000 last year if you end up with very high inflation, maybe worth $3 million, let's say after a few years, this would be quite high inflation, but things like this have certainly happened in places like Zimbabwe and Argentina, etc. This is the good news. Your house goes from 300,000 to 3 million or whatever the adjustment is. The bad news is that now a new roof for your house is going to cost $350,000 because there's been hyperinflation and that's going to end up being more than you originally paid for the house itself. Where are you going to come up with that kind of money when you desperately need it? $350,000 to put a new roof on your house. You might be able to keep some money on the side for, for repairs when you initially buy a house. But then if you start those cash reserves, that rainy day fund in US dollars or other fiat, it won't buy you a new roof after a couple of years of high inflation. So in that case, you're still better off just storing all the money in Bitcoin. It's important to remember too that if you don't buy that new roof, the entire value of your investment is at risk and you're just one large rainstorm away from permanently impairing the value of your house and turning it into a teardown where the only real value left is the land. Bitcoin will almost certainly continue to appreciate at a much faster rate than any real estate, even levered up real estate, I would say. In fact, houses are always getting cheaper for Bitcoiners. If we look at a, a chart like this in 2016, from 2016 to 2024, the price, this looks like a median home price in the US went from $288,000 to $434,000, but the price denominated in Bitcoin fell because Bitcoin was appreciating at the same time more quickly than houses were. So the price of the median house fell from 664 Bitcoin in 2016 down to just 6.6 .6 Bitcoin in 2024. And I imagine this trend will continue. So if you're renting and holding Bitcoin, that could be, from an investment perspective, one of the best things you could do. I like this meme from Ben Justman. Your lady wants a house anon. They're on sale for $6,200 uh, $6, right now. Don't mess this up. This is back when Bitcoin was at $62,000 a coin. You'll never buy a house with 0 0.1 BTC. I love that you're so open about your mental illness. So don't, es don't underestimate what sort of appreciation, even relatively small amounts of Bitcoin, like a tenth of a Bitcoin can have. Pro tip, this is also risky tip, so it's not investment advice or tax advice or anything like that. If you're gonna buy a house anyway and can afford it, consider getting a larger mortgage than you actually need and then use that extra cash that that frees up to buy Bitcoin. You'll come out ahead assuming that you can make the monthly mortgage payments and the annual property tax payments. You'll come out ahead as long as Bitcoin appreciates at a faster rate than the seven or eight or whatever, wherever mortgage rates are now, as long as the, the appreciation rate of Bitcoin is higher than the rate at which you're financing the house or financing the Bitcoin. This is always the rule. The nice thing about this is that you cannot get a margin call on your house, assuming you pay your mortgage and property taxes. You don't get a margin call though if the, if the price of your house falls. By contrast, if you lever up or borrow money to buy Bitcoin or buy stocks, you can get a margin call and if the price uh, falls enough. And so this is one of the things about Bitcoin. It can be very volatile. It can dip down to very low levels just very briefly and then come back up. But so this is the nice thing about collateralizing a loan with real estate rather than with, uh, with Bitcoin. Final thoughts, if you're worried about World War III or civilizational or social collapse or something like this, 
it still might make sense to sacrifice some of your Bitcoin stash to get a foreign passport or residency in a safer location, though I'm not always sure where the best place to go is that we're really an interconnected world now. Or the other thing you can do is you could pick up a remote property closer to where you live, where you can be self-sufficient, have a garden, food, power generation, self-defense, sort of a Bitcoin citadel for bad times. Now, every decision involves trade-offs. There's no one size fits all solution when it comes to real estate or Bitcoin or how much you should own of each of them. And unfortunately, no one knows the future. No one knows the future in terms of the civilization. No one knows the future in terms of Bitcoin, though I'm extremely bullish on it, obviously. But more importantly, no one knows your future. So it's always a good thing to invest mostly in long-term relationships and then do what's best for your spouse and children. This is much more important than even investment returns, obviously. And don't let anyone shame you about what you want to do with your own Bitcoin freedom money. People will end up spending their Bitcoin, and this is certainly a fine thing if they do it with eyes wide open. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.